Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a review and wear test of the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. This concealer retails for 50 Australian dollars on the Natasha Denona website, but 54 on the Sephora Australia website, which is a bit rude in this economy and it does come in 50 shades. Natasha Denona call it a long lasting creaseless concealer with a natural medium buildable coverage luminous matte finish. It's made with biomimetic pigments and texture perfecting microspheres with up to 19 hours of wear. They do make a lot of big claims with this concealer so you might wanna pause this and grab a snack because we're gonna be here for a while. They claim that it uses a unique butter flow technology which is a trademarked term they say that the high glam concealer adjusts to any irregularity on the skin surface locking in coverage for all day wear they do claim to have some clinically proven results this was an ex vivo test done on 30 volunteers over 28 days and tested on 70 additional contributors over 28 days. Now, these claims are 61% of people who participated reported a noticeable dark circle reduction and 51% reported a significant under eye puffiness reduction. They also claim that it is anti-aging. It can increase skin hydration and boost collagen synthesis. They also claim firmer and luminous skin and cell detoxification. There are two ingredients that they appear to hero in the description of this product. That is the capsicum anum leaf which can provide a firming effect, fades away dark circles, reduces eye puffiness, and improves skin regeneration. And then we have Portulaca grandiflora, which provides strong antioxidant activity, fights inflammation, and has an anti-aging effect. The packaging on this one is subtle, but sleek. I feel like it matches the Natasha Denona vibe quite well, and the price tag. The doe foot on this one is pretty cool. It has really good flexibility to it and a nice point. So if you want to apply like the tiniest amount, you can totally do that. It also has a little hole in the center of it, kind of like an elongated donut. So I'm applying a small amount to half of my face so you can just see the difference side by side with and without the concealer. Now I feel like this color match is looking a little off for me, but I need to explain. My skin is particularly red here because I was in the middle of like retinol usage. So I've got a bit of the retinol uglies, which I'll get into a bit more as we're seeing how this concealer sits on the skin. But the color match is actually not too bad for me. I feel like I hit, I don't know, maybe hit the jackpot with this because when I went to pick it up in store, they had such a small crappy collection of shades. It was just like, maybe like, 15 tubes just in a little tub. There wasn't even a proper display for this at the Sephora that I went to. So I was really lucky to find a shade that worked for me. In terms of application, this applies beautifully. It's so smooth, it's easy to blend out. And here I'm taking a close look at some spots where I can see my skin is starting to peel from the retinol, especially around my nose. And I have to say, on camera, I feel like you can barely see it. It looked worse in person. I have to give props to the concealer because even though it looked worse in person than it does on camera, it really was not that bad. It could have been so much worse. Here I am with just the concealer over my full face and I think it looks really good. After finishing some of my makeup, here I am with half my face powdered. So the left-hand side is powdered right hand side is not and I'm trying to show you how basically it was the powder that gripped to my skin that was peeling prior to that couldn't really tell that it was going on everything looked good with just the concealer and the foundation that I'd put on I really like testing products on my skin when it's like this because I feel like if a product can sit well on skin that is going through some shit then you know you've got a good product. It's only gonna get better as your skin improves as well. 
Here we are about five hours later as a refresh, the right side of my face is not set, left side is. I have noticed a little bit of mascara transfer on the side of my face that's not set. And I have to say, I don't think my lines look great here. My smile lines and the texture on my chin from when I had acne is always a dead giveaway of whether a product will age you or not. And for me, this one does on those areas of my face. I actually think this sits better under the eyes than it does anywhere else. I'm a bit of a loss as to why it doesn't look that great in this area of my face because it's not actually creasing and it's not pooling, which you'll be able to see when I sort of tighten the skin in those areas. Whereas on the powdered side, those same problem spots for me, you'll be able to see that the product's kind of separated with the powder. And it's probably just to do with facial movement, but I think it's interesting that uh, under the eyes and elsewhere on the face, I get different results. Here I'm just taking a closer look at the separation under my eyes and it does look, it looks pretty shitty, honestly. And I feel like this sort of thing, when you're wearing makeup, it ages you a lot. Here we are at the 10 hour mark. Will I ever do one of these wear tests and wear it for 12 hours? Probably not. So the unset side is looking great. She's fresh, looks like she did when I first applied it. If you remember from earlier in the video, they did claim 19 hours of wear. Look, I believe it. I don't know anyone who's wearing concealer for 19 hours these days. However, young partying Hayley certainly would have loved a concealer that could hold up for 19 hours. She's gone, she's not here anymore. So I clearly have no need for something that wears for 19 hours now. However, if you do, then this one might be for you. I wanna talk about my thoughts and experience around the claims that this concealer makes. So they do, do talk about having clinically proven results. Now, unless you're publishing your results for everyone to see and telling us like how the study was done and all that jazz, I don't believe you, I don't trust you and I don't give a shit. Uh, it's a concealer, of course it's going to noticeably reduce dark circles. It conceals, that's exactly what it does. Are you talking about when people apply this, they notice a dark circle reduction? Or are you talking about when people have this off their skin that they're noticing a dark circle reduction? It's not clear to me, so I do not believe you and I do not care. 51% reported a significant under eye puffiness reduction. If you have puffiness under your eyes and you are applying something on a daily basis with a massaging or tapping uh, motion, that can reduce puffiness in itself. So for me, I take these with a huge grain of salt. Like I said, if I can't see the studies and know how you did it, I don't care. Whenever I see claims like this, I just think, you know, they're trying to sell me something and they're trying to make the product look amazing and like I can't live without it. Does that mean this is a bad concealer? Absolutely not. It's beautiful. Okay, don't get it twisted. But also just remember when you are spending money not to get super sucked into some bullshit. The other big claims, anti-aging, increases skin hydration, boosts collagen synthesis, firmer and luminous skin, cell detoxification. Uh, what? Two claims that I do believe. It's definitely lightweight and has a natural finish. And it is in fact talc free. I checked. I also want to talk about the two major ingredients that they hero in this, the capsicum anum leaf and the portulaca grandiflora. So with these two ingredients, they can add some pretty big claims to the concealer, but I just want to point out that they are the second and third last ingredients on the inky list. Now, does this mean that it can't possibly have skincare benefits? No, absolutely not. I just want to be realistic about this. I feel a bit dicky sitting here saying, oh, it's got these fantastic ingredients that are supposed to do this. And they're not pointing out the fact that they are, they're in there, but they're very, very low on the ingredient list. 
Okay, I can't actually remember when I finished my makeup this morning. I think it was 8.30. It's 7 o'clock now and I've had this on for ages. And I, look, I'm ready to call it. I, <laughs> we, we all want to get ready for bed and have a snuggle and watch a movie. No, I need to finish working. Based on what I'm seeing with the makeup now compared to how it looked when I put it on and after I did the first check-in, I don't think it's going to change that much in the next couple of hours. So I'm pretty confident just wrapping it up here. I think this is a really nice concealer. Now I have a just hard and fast rule with my skin these days. Little bit of product, light layers, build it up if you need it. I used very little product on my skin today. I use more bronzer than I did concealer or foundation put together. And I definitely think that plays a big part in how it wears. I think it looks really fresh. I definitely prefer the way it looks under my eyes on the side that is not set. I just think it looks nicer. And I think on the side where I have set it, my fine lines are actually more obvious. Throughout the day, I feel like it's sat on my skin really nicely and it hasn't really budged. I also think it's been really forgiving with my mild retinol peeling, which is a big thing for me. Um, that's sometimes that's a thing that just prevents me from wearing makeup altogether. You know, it's so mild that I don't notice it on my bare skin until I put on makeup. And then I'm like, this, this is going to look terrible all day. But I feel like it, while you can see it, and I did point it out to you guys, it is specifically worse on my forehead where I've powdered it. I feel like that's where you can really notice it. Um, and there are some other areas even where I haven't powdered it that if you're looking really, really closely, you can see it. But I would be pretty annoyed if somebody got that close to me and could see it in real life you know oh man i need some lip balm i thought i could get through this without it i'm desperate to go and have a shower but i i gotta do this overall i've really loved this concealer it has worn well it looks great on the skin it's really comfortable if you have dry skin if you have fine lines it's quite forgiving if you have dryness it's quite forgiving so it ticks all of the boxes for me all of the big things that are really important to me it does the high glam concealer will definitely be staying in my everyday makeup drawer along with the fenty look i love them both i feel like people are going to say which one do you prefer I don't think I can really pick one. I feel like they're really quite similar. I'd say in terms of color matches, I did a better job with the Fenty one. So I would probably gravitate towards this one more simply because of that. But without doing like a side-by-side -side comparison and wear test, I don't think I could choose one of these over the other simply based on their formula. They are very similar and they're both gorgeous so i'm gonna leave that there guys i want to say a massive thank you to my channel members and if you have tried the natasha denona high glam concealer and you absolutely love it let me know what other makeup items you're loving at the moment because we're the same we like the same things and i want to try some more stuff i i want to buy some makeup I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.